Hey everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to add and configure the server information panel add-on to your DayZ standalone server. And once again, I just want to say I am going to start off where I left off in my last DayZ video, so if you're confused, I highly recommend you start at the beginning of the series. Links are in the video description and on the right hand side of your screen right now. This video is broken up into three different parts. Timestamps are on your screen right now. So for part one, it's gonna be downloading and configuring the server information panel add-on. So as you can see right here, I am on the workshop page for the add-on. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and go up into the URL, find the workshop ID, which is this right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And now that I have that copied, I'm gonna go ahead and remote into my server. This is gonna be the same server I've been using in past videos. I recommend checking out my Daisy series. The link is in the video description. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to where I have my server set up. So I have that in C servers, Daisy. And as we have in previous videos, we do have the script that automatically downloads add-ons, keeps them up to date, all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our modlist.txt file. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that ID that we got from the mod uh, workshop page. And then I can go and minimize back and we can grab a name. You can name this whatever, but I'm gonna keep it with what the actual name of the mod is. And we can go and save this file. And if you're not using the same script as me that I've used in previous videos, all you have to do is you subscribe to the add-on on the workshop, you let it download, and then you copy it from your main game directory over to your server like you would to install any other mod for Daisy. I'm going to go ahead and run my start server.bat file. And what this will do is it'll go ahead and make sure Daisy's up to date, and it'll also go ahead and download the add-ons and make sure we have the latest versions of them, including the latest version of the server information panel. Again, if you're not using the script, just go ahead and subscribe to it on the workshop, download it on your local computer, and copy it over. Alrighty, and it looks like our server is fully started. We can go ahead and close out of it because we're not quite ready to join. So we'll go ahead and close out of all that, and we'll go back into our main folder. And then as we can see, the script went ahead and downloaded the mod, and it looks like the key is in here as well. And then there's the mod folder right there, so that all worked. Again, if you're not using the script, make sure you copy the keys from the key folder right here into your keys folder on your main server. That way people can join your server. So next we're going to have to create the config file that the add-on uses. So if we go into add server information panel again, we have the server panel folder. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go back and we're going to need to go into your server profiles folder. In my case, I've been naming mine server name. So I have like all my config files here, like my battle eye, my banking, all that here. If you don't know which one is your profile folder, you can open up your start.bat file. So we can go and open ours real fast. And I'll be using Adam and I'm just going to go ahead and go to where it starts the server. So it's going to be down here in the start section. And then we have the dash profiles parameter. And then my profile parameter is going to be server name. So as we go back here, we can see server name. And that's how we know that this is going to be our profile folder. So anyways, we'll go back to the server information panel. Make sure you have this server panel folder copied. We'll go inside our server profile. And then we're going to go ahead and paste that in here. And then now that we have this in our profile folder, we can go into the server panel folder. And you'll see that there's a server panel.json file. So we can go ahead and drag that in Atom. And you can see it has a default configuration already set up. And if you load in game, that this is exactly what you'll see whenever you press the pause button to go ahead and open up the server information panel. So I do have an example file of what I made mine. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that in here. And we can drag it over here to the side so we can kind of compare them side by side. So you have your server name. This is going to display along the top. So in my case, I changed mine to welcome to the game Juice test server. And then you're going to have three buttons that you can make, and these are going to be hyperlink buttons. So whenever you click them, they'll go to a link. So in this case, we have Discord has a Discord URL, website has a website URL, and then Donate has a Donate URL. And this can essentially be anything, and it can go to any website. And then we're going to have the tabs. So we have tab 0, 1, 2, and 3, so you have four tabs in total. And the way I've kind of laid out my tabs is I have rules, mod, server info, and restart times. You can set up however you want to do it. This is just as an example. This is the way I have it set up. Um, and if you can notice here on the tab three actually has nothing. So this will disable the tab. So if say you don't need a tab or something, you just put nothing in there, just a start quote and end quote, and then you'll be good to go. And then we have the actual contents of the tab. So whenever someone clicks on a tab, it'll show everything that's there. So in this case, you know, you have your rules, you list out your rules, and this all follows the same syntax. Um, you never have a comma at, on the last line um, of this little section, but you need it on every other line. And then you'll have a comma at the end of the actual section here. And then you don't have one on the very last one. 
Um, and I'll leave a link to my example um, config file, but you can use whatever you want. This is just kind of showing the way I chose to make stuff, but it's up to you. And there's a very useful website. Um, that I'm going to show you and it helps you kind of find errors if you have any issues with your thing. So we can go ahead and control A and we're going to go ahead and copy all of this and then we'll minimize out our remote connection. And then we have jsonlint.com and this can kind of help you find any sort of issues or errors. If something's not working, it's a good idea to plug your entire file into here to see why. So if we go ahead and validate, we'll see everything's valid here. There's no errors. However, say if you break it somewhere, like say we, you know, missed that right there, missed the comma. It's going to go ahead and break and it's going to try to tell you where it's at. In this case, it actually is pretty accurate on where it's wrong with it. However, there could be some cases where it's not super accurate. Just, you know, keep in mind whatever line it tells you is wrong. It's probably around there that's wrong, somewhere in that area. So we have a few other config changes that we can make if we want to. We have display player info. So this will display some info on the right hand side of the screen whenever you have the server information tab open. You can set this to zero if you don't want this to happen or one if you want it. And then we also have the display player tab. We can set this to zero if we don't want it and keep it at one if we do. And that's just an additional tab that would be placed right next to this third tab. That essentially just is a player information tab, gives some information. None of this is pretty self-explanatory on how to edit this. Again, just don't forget your commas. Um, and again, don't forget to not have a comma at the very end here. Worst comes to worst, you can use that website to validate it and look for errors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy all this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it all in here. So we have our server panel JSON file. I've went ahead and saved that and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my server again and then we'll go ahead and jump in game once it's done. Alrighty, and it looks like our server is fully started up. So we can go ahead and minimize out of our remote connection and we can minimize out of that. And then we can go ahead and join our server. And then we'll go ahead and search for our server. And we'll go ahead and join. Alrighty, now that we're in game, we can go ahead and have a look and make sure everything's working properly. So we can go ahead and press the pause button. And as we can see, everything's loaded. So we have those buttons on the side here. So these all go to the links. So we can have the donate button, the website button, and the Discord button. These all go to that URL. So if I click on here for say Discord, for example, I'll go ahead and open it up. This goes to a URL invite. Um, so that's all good. And then you have your website and your donate buttons. Again, those are just hyperlinks. You can have those set to whatever you want. You also have your player information here. So you have your name, your current health, your blood, your water levels, your food levels, and your position on the map. And it also has a list of players currently online. And as you can see, it has that little title text right here that we set up earlier. And then the rules is automatically going to be the default tab. Your tab zero essentially will always be your default. So this is the first thing everyone's going to see when they load in. And then we have our tab one, however you decide to count it technically. And this just has mods that we listed. And then we have server info, which is gonna be our tab two slash three. And you have your server info, and it's just gonna go down the list. And then we have our tab three slash four. Again, whatever text you decide to enter. And then we have the players tab. Again, this is one of the things that you could disable with that um, zero or one option in the config file. Same with this player information right here. And if we go and click on it, it's just gonna give us some more information. Tell us that we're healthy, tell us the gender, our blood type, all that if we know. We'll have some other information here, some other stats such as distance traveled, survive time, zombies killed, players killed, longest shot, in-game time, session time, and what's in your hands. So that'll update if you have something in your hands. So say if we pull out this gun, if I can find it, there it is. And then we press insert again and go back to the players tab. It'll show that I have the M4A1 in my hands. And then to get out of the menu, you can either hit cancel here or you can press the X on the top right. It does the exact same thing. And instead of pressing pause, we can always press escape and then server information will show up here in the menu as well. And that's really about it. It's a pretty simple mod to set up. The only real thing is setting up that config file, which can cause some issues for some people. Just make sure you're following the standard rules there. Make sure you're having a comma at the end of everything except like the last line. Um, and you should be good to go. If you have any issues, of course, you can always visit that uh, verifier website so you can see if there's any issues in your config file. Anyways, any important information or corrections will be in the description and in the pinned comment as always. More videos about kill feed, custom loading screens and watermarks, etc. all coming soon. And if you guys have any video suggestions or mod setup videos you would like to see, let me know. If you guys are having any issues setting up this mod or any other DayZ related issues, feel free to leave a comment on the video or join my Discord for more help. 
And if this video helped you, consider subscribing. Other than that, have a great day.